Good evening, First Church. Why don't we stand all across this building this evening? Is anybody grateful to be in the house of the Lord this night? Come on, like you truly, truly, truly are grateful to be in here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, can we just offer him up a praise right now? Hallelujah, Lord. We love you and we thank you, Jesus. You are great and greatly to be praised, oh Lord. We love you, Jesus. We just wanted to sing a couple songs tonight and uh, hope that you sing with us. We just want to feel after the presence of God tonight. We're so grateful that he's in this room right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Come on, sing with me right here. Jesus said the center of it all. like a big choir from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you Jesus yeah Jesus Let's sing that one more time everybody in the room singing Jesus at the center Jesus at the center Jesus Hallelujah. 
Jesus again, Jesus. Sing it strong. 
Hallelujah. Come on, let's keep that up. Come on, you don't have to stop that. We serve an almighty God. His name is Jesus. Do you know him? Come on, let's worship him for just a moment. We got time. Let's worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, lift up your praises to him today. Are you a thankful people? Lord, I love you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus, Lord, I love you. You see here at First Church, prayer is our anchor, right? See, we don't just talk about prayer, but we do it. Prayer is something that is evident in each and one of our lives. Something is, it's powerful that takes place in our lives. And it doesn't just happen at our homes, but it happens here at First Church. And on Monday nights, we are, we are just having a great, great time with our prayer meetings that are being taken place throughout the week. But we always want to be able to have focused prayer. We want to be able to have specific prayer in the house tonight. Amen? They're going to put some names up on the board there behind me. And I just want to take the next few moments. I want you to understand something. You may not know every single name that's on that board. You may know all of them. There may be some of you that are viewing online at home right now that don't have a clue on who any of those names are. But what I want to point out to you is each and every one of those individuals 
that is the most important person to somebody. You sitting in this pew, you're the most important person to someone. And someone's going to weep for you. And somebody's going to tarry for you. And somebody's going to plead your name before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But I'm asking you right now as the body of Christ and as First Church in Sterling Heights, would you take these names before the throne? Would you take these individuals all over this house? As every hand is lifted, as every eye is closed, as every mouth is open, speaking up to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Lord, we love you. Lord, we're so wonderfully blessed to be able to be in your house. Lord, with our friends, with our family, Lord, with those that we hold dear. God, I'm asking you, Lord, as we bring these names before you today, Lord, see each and every one of the needs, see each and every one of the requests. Lord, I call them brother. I call them sister. Lord, but you call them son and daughter. God, these requests are being brought before us today. Lord, being brought to our memory. God, but there's never a moment of the day where you do not see each and every every need, each and every circumstance. God, I am asking you to directly move upon each and every one of these households. Lord, move upon each and every one of these situations. Lord, I'm believing in you. I'm trusting in you. Lord, I know that you can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask and think today, God. Lord, as we stir up that gift that's in this house today, Lord, move freely in this place. Lord, from door to door. Lord, from wall to wall, let your glory, Lord, let your, your miracle power, Lord, let your touch and your presence Lord, fall upon us in this place today. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Come on, can you give a hand clap to the Lord today? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. If you're a guest with us today, thank you so much for coming. It's such a joy to be able to see everybody in the house of the Lord today. If this is your first time here at First Church, thank you so much for being here. I know that uh, with the current situation in our, in our culture, there's a lot of places that you could be, but you chose to be here, and I am so grateful for that. Thank you for being there. Those of you that are joining with us online as well, just uh, it, it's not uncomfortable. Maybe it is the first time, the first couple of times, but it's not uncomfortable just to be able to lift up your hands where you're at in the presence of your own home and just reach out and speak the name of Jesus over situations. Speak the name of Jesus over whatever's taking place in your life. He is a healer and he is a miracle worker. Amen. Amen. Do continue to connect with us online throughout the week. I know that we are not in our, uh, we don't have a current semester going on with our, with our uh, life groups. But we do have another one coming in January, so that's it. That's excited. Be an expectation and expecting of that. And uh, what we're going to set forth for the next few moments, and what we're going to be doing as we move forward here, um, please continue to be able to do your giving and uh, your your partnering with us. Um, they'll have a uh, thing up on the board there to be able to show you the different ways that you can partner with us. Uh, but continue with your giving and your tithing online. And we'll just move forward with those avenues of the way to be able to give. Amen. They're going to put up a counter up there. And uh, we're going to be able to just walk around for a few moments, continue to practice our social distancing, give those, those hallelujah air high fives and those Holy Ghost elbow bumps and, and whatever you want to do to be able to go ahead and introduce yourself and show yourselves friendly to somebody, okay? Does that make sense? What do they tell us? Smile with our eyes, right? All right. Amen. Amen. Amen.
once you get home. Thank you so very much for coming and uh, this is just always a fun fun night and uh, um, <laughs> I, I, I was standing in the impossible honey baked ham line today it looked like an anaconda I mean it was just and it was raining and so I just did what I do, you know. I, I was just making all the people around me laugh, and and, uh, and uh, I had a guy in front of me with blue suede shoes, beautiful blue suede shoes, and I said, "Man, what are you doing in the rain with a pair of blue suede shoes?" I said, "Even Elvis had enough sense not to do that, man." And I, and I, it was, so that was my end. I started talking to him and talking to. Him. So way in the back of the line, unbeknownst to me, was Sean and Larry Knott, and they haven't been able to be in church for months, and Larry said, that's my pastor. I can hear his voice, and Sean said, nah, I don't think. She said, oh, yeah, look at that bunch of people up there. I promise you, he's right in the middle of them. Go up there and check. <laughs> and, and, and there he was, man, and it was so, it was just so great to see him. And uh, I don't want to steal his thunder, but Larry will share Friday on with on Renee's uh, Zoom prayer. Just they had God protected them recently. Just wow, it was it was an amazing time. And uh, so this is kind of a hybrid tonight. This is I I like this because um, when when some of you will remember a guy named Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson uh, was, a, was the man on late night television for many, many, many years. But he had this sidekick by the name of Ed McMahon. And uh, <laughs> which reminds me of another story I need to tell you. But anyway, Ed, Ed McMahon always used to say, here's Johnny. And, uh, and, and sometimes I get the feeling that's what church is like. Here's Harold. And uh, I don't like that. I, uh, I, I love it when I can hear from you. And uh, so before I forget it, let me tell you my Ed McMahon story. Ed McMahon became the spokesman for Publishers Clearinghouse. And um, now you pray because my mama has just got the fifth letter. Today. Now I know she's probably the only, there's just a handful of people that have gotten this. But they said, you, are, you, you have made it to the final selection process. And, uh, and, and, and uh, she said, I want you to pray over this because I want to build a new church with this money. And uh, so somebody's got to win that money. So uh, I'm going to pray that Esther Gertrude pulls a, pulls a rabbit out of the hat, man. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Ed McMahon be, was, and every year they'd give away $10 million. And uh, I live beside of this lady that... Um, she, she was just, uh, I'm trying to be respectful. Um, she never laughed. She never showed any emotion at all. And they had a friend, and uh, their family had a friend, and <laughs> they hired an Ed McMahon lookalike. 
and they rented a white van and had a sign made, Publisher's Clearinghouse, drove up in front of her house on the 31st of December, and Ed McMahon knocked on her door and gave her a check, one of them big, big dudes, man, for $10 million. My neighbor, who never, ever, ever showed an emotion, was in her pajamas making snow angels on the front yard because she made one ten million dollars. Boy, was she bad when she found out. <laughs> and so I am more than prepared to, uh, to, and I probably will just give you the cliff notes of what I've worked on for tonight. But we're going to split this thing in half. And Brother John Gibbs has got a microphone, and he's going to drift in this part. And Brother Neto has a microphone, and he's over here. I'd like, I'd like to hear from you. I'd like, I, I want to know if there's something that you're thankful for and something that you're grateful for, something that maybe God's done for you, something that we're not aware of. And uh, hold up your hand. And these fellows will give you a microphone, and we'd like you to stand up and just let us be aware of what God's done in your life. And because uh, if you don't, it's going to be the Herald Show. And uh, don't don't let it be that tonight. And it's just uh, who's going to go first? Oh, there's one right there. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good evening. God is great, and He is greatly to be praised. I'm so glad that I know Him in the power of his resurrection as well as the fellowship of his suffering i had to say publicly that i love him today i think about this crazy year that we've all gone through he's kept me in my family and i'm grateful today i have two daughters they're both married both my son-in-laws are working of course you know my son joel and jennifer they they're evangelists the lord has kept them and been with them on the road. They, they got a, a kick in the teeth here a couple months ago, but the Lord came by and took care of that situation. I'm thankful for that. My other son-in-law is an electrician. He's been working through this whole crazy time. I've been working through this time. My family's been healthy. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider today. Everything that I have and everything that I am is from the Lord. Without him, I would be nothing and would have nothing. And I just want to give him praise. He is a great God. Hey, y'all. <laughs> so, thank you so much. So I want to thank um, Pastor Hoffman for just being welcoming and everybody else who's welcoming me here. Um, I grew up in the Catholic Church, but um, just God, he restored me, and I was dead. I was dead. I was hurt. I was just listening to the enemy and what he wanted me to believe. But then he restored me and healed me and showed me love. Our God is a sweet God. He's a yeah. gentle God. He's so good, and he pushes me to do what is right. So I just want to say that I love, I'm crazy about my Jesus. I'm crazy about him. <laughs> also, the Lord has given me dreams. So the Lord has given me dreams. Um, he's given me so many things, but dreams, and oh, I have a number of them, so maybe I can talk to you about them more. But um, he gave me a dream, and this dream I was in like a maroon room, and it was a picture of Jesus, and it was a picture of Mary, and they were held on the same platform, and this guy just came in and said, pray to both of them. And I was just like, that doesn't seem right, like that's just... I don't understand that. And if you ask a lot of people in the Catholic Church, they don't understand why we pray to Mary. So, um, you know, that was just resonating in my head. And, you know, I, when the Lord tells you to do something, you move. You have to move. So I said, I'm going to move. I'm going to follow what you tell me to do. So, yeah, amen. Yeah.
I got to make sure this crazy thing works. And it's just, uh, what is the last thing in the Bible that we have recorded that Mary said? Does anybody know? There you go. Whatever he says, do it. That's, those are the last words that we know of that she said. Well, I won't say that's the last thing I know she said because according to the book of Acts, she was there with that original 120 that were baptized with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. So it was a great miracle when she gave birth to Jesus, but it was a greater miracle when he gave birth to her because she needed to be born again just like everybody else. And that's uh, pretty amazing. You know, remember they said one time, Jesus, your mother and your brothers and your sisters are without. And there, and there was a big crowd around him and they were on the edge of the crowd. And he said, who is my mother? But whoever hears the word of the Lord and does it, that's who my mother is. And that's why. We call each other brother and sister because look at, how is it? Matthew's good at this. It's in the book of Hebrews, probably, uh, I don't know, Matthew chapter 12, where it says, we are not come unto the mount that burns with fire nor blackness, nor darkness, nor tempest. It's talking about Sinai. It said, but we are come unto Mount Zion. And, and, and it says, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. And then it says, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn. But notice, that, that, that's why when you study Zion, To many people, Zion is just a... See, Jerusalem was built on a series of hills. One of those hills was Zion. But when you study the Bible, Zion is much more than just a hill. Zion is a synonym for the church. For instance, there's a scripture that's in... Remember Isaiah 61, which was where Jesus read the first time he preached? It said, Ble he said to... For all of those that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, garment of praise for spirit. Go through the book of Psalms if you want a homework assignment and just type in Zion. And there's dozens and dozens and dozens of verses. We're Zion, okay? You know, you, you are come unto Mount Zion, which it says is the heavenly Jerusalem. The church, same thing. Zion, heavenly Jerusalem, church, it's all the same thing. So then you go to the book of Galatians, and it says, Jerusalem, which is above, or the heavenly Jerusalem. Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. So we all got the same father. Our Father, which art in heaven. So there shouldn't be any doubt here as to who our m Father is. Well, who's our mother? The church. So look at it. We got the same mom. We got the same dad. Bible said, by one spirit have you all been baptized into one body. We've all had access to his blood We've all been buried in his name. So if you got same mom, same dad, same blood, same spirit, same last name, you be kin. <laughs> you be family. That's West Virginia speak, kin. That's what the K-I-N. And it's just, uh, so I've got, and you've got brothers and sisters on the other side of this planet right now. You couldn't even <laughs> pronounce their name, some of them. But we're going to have a family reunion one day. And you want to be there because it's going to be something special, okay? Going to be something special. Somebody got, I'm, look, I'm waiting for hands. 
I can, oh, Amy, Amy son, that's what you'd be in Japan, Amy son. Um, well, first, I just want to say that I'm thankful for all of you for First Church. Um, you guys just mean the world to me. Um, so, two months ago, I, I suffered a loss that I just wasn't ready for. Um, and um, God's just been with me. Um, the fact that you know, I've been able to get up every day and that I can face the day and that I'm not angry. I, I, I just thank God that I'm just grateful to God that he gave me peace and um, he's just so good our God is so good and um, I don't know I guess that's all I wanted to say Amy moved here from Virginia for her to be a contract employee with the military didn't know anybody here but this church has received her. And it's what we're talking about, to be a family. And we love you. And we're proud of you. And you're, you're great stuff. <laughs> you're great stuff. <laughs> yeah, that Neto guy back there. Uh -huh. I'm grateful for um, my my Lord, of course, and uh, I too was Catholic. My whole family was until we were eight years old, and then we converted. But um, I'm thankful for my father, who's been a wonderful example and a loving dad for us all, and um, my wife and my wonderful kids. God has just been awesome. He's been amazing. Um, it's, <clears throat> it's been a journey this year for everyone and everyone's got their own little story. Everyone's got their own little thing. And, but at the very end here, uh, we're all still standing. We're all, you know, <laughs> alive and, and surviving. And, uh, but, you know, we're going to come out here with so many testimonies, yep. so many wonderful stories. And, and I'm just I'm praying that, you know, 2021 is going to be just a fantastic year. Um, you know, whatever, if you lost anything, whatever, you can recoup it here in the, in the following year. But if you look at this church, this church has not suffered. This church has, has, has plugged through this, this entire, you know, 10-month episode. And, um, and, you know, I'm a contractor. I, I, I work, and I've been blessed to work. I've only had very limited days off. And, uh, but, you know, but the people are... are some of them are scared and some of them are not, you know, and you're going to get people on both sides of the camp. And uh, but w it, my job is 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 to to be the light right. for these people. They got to They got to see Jesus, whatever little bit of contact that I have with with this world. You know, I'm going to show them show them Jesus and give them hope. They're looking for hope and we have it. Right. I love you all. Thank you. Because it's live streamed, they're asking you to step more towards the front up here so that people that are watching online can not just hear you but can see you as well. And I know you want to be on the Internet. So, uh, so what do we got? Grandma? Come on, Grandma Sailor. Oh, no, no. Get her I'm up here, Mike. I'm just thankful Michael. for this year. Um, I turned 90 years old, and I didn't know I had so many friends. Uh, for my 90th birthday, my children had uh, 90 people give me a present 90 days before my birthday, but some days I got two presents. There were second, two people coming to my house instead of one, and I'm thankful that I have all these friends, people that I hadn't seen for years showed up at my door or called me on the phone or sent me a card, and it was amazing how they showed their love towards me. Uh, I'm just thankful for health and strength. I'm thankful that God has given me health and strength, has given me lovely children that help me. My children are so wonderful to me. They are always there when I need them. 
And that's one thing some people don't have. But my children, I just have them mention something that I need or want, and they seem to be there for me. They restore storm doors for me. They rake my yeah. They blow my leaves for me. They plumber my snow. They take my snow away from me. I don't have any need that they don't re respond to, and I'm thankful for that. In 1988, they they were already here. I wish you could have known Delbert. Delbert was a dude, man. He was that big around. He had a tiny little waist, and uh, until he started getting all bent over, that dude could work everybody into the ground. He was tough as shoe leather, man. And him, he was famous for his basement. He uh, he had little paths through his basement, and that we probably you could have found Jimmy Hoffa in. Delbert Space, or, you know, it's, he had stuff in there, man. Have you cleared all that out? You cleared all of it out? <laughs> huh, what? All that change that he collected over the years. For years, Delbert would come, and he would give us uh, some, on, he would exchange paper money for any change that came into the church. And he would go through every one of them pennies and every one of them nickels and them dimes. And, uh, and, and it, man, he had a lot of change. Wow. -y. <laughs> I heard a story about a hundred dollar bill and a one dollar bill. And they, you know, they have a place in Washington, D.C. where they burn it up after it gets all worn. And so the $1 bill said to the $100 bill said, so how was your life? And he said, oh, my life was amazing. He said, I, 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 I was in exclusive hotels and I was in amazing restaurants and I rode in limousines and I was in the finest casinos and Man, I've just had an amazing life. And he said to the $1 bill, how, how was your life? And he said, well, I just went from one Pentecostal church to the next. <laughs> All right, enough pitiful laughter from the pastor. Huh? you got to come over here so they can see you. Okay. I want to, th huh? can they see him? I want to thank Draylen and Brother Mike Netto and Tyrone, who flew to Boston after church Sunday and worked for the last three days helping a, a church with their sound system. And they had a great prayer meeting while they were there. They flew back in today, and they're back in church tonight. So these guys have been working ever since they left Sunday. And, and so I want all three of them to know that I love you, and you were a great representation of this church. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to say, um, first of all, two things. One, uh, I just want to say thank you to, obviously, Pastor Hoffman and um, to his family, Sister Hoffman, Ashley, everybody in this entire church. Uh, moving here was uh, a big deal for me, f you know, first off. I mean, I lived in Dallas uh, for um, my whole life until I was 18 and uh, went off to Bible college and then came here. And I just felt so loved and so uh, accepted here. And uh, obviously you guys accepted me, accepted my wife. And then, you know, her parents moved here. And so uh, just on behalf of our entire, you know, clan, uh, thank you so much. I mean, they jumped in and just, you know, were able to connect so great, and you guys made that so easy. And so that really means, you know, so much to me that uh, we, have a, we have a loving, uh, a loving family church, you know. And so I just want to say thank you for that. Second thing I want to say is, um, and this is something that, was brought to my attention Sunday as I was listening to Pastor preach. I don't remember if everybody remembers when we first started this this year off. Uh, we we started off and Pastor preached a message, and uh, 
and, and you know, like in, in our in our apostolic, you know, world, everybody was preaching about, oh, you know, the year 2020, it's the, it's the year of vision, you know. And uh, <laughs> and then you see, like, what actually happened in 2020, like, man, didn't see that coming at all, you know. <laughs> but uh, this pastor preached a sermon, and he, he ended his message with Acts chapter 20 and verse 20. And it reads, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. And I just look at that and I'm like, man, we, we, we were able to establish so many different churches and connect with so many more different people from house to house throughout the year of 2020. Um, but I don't think it's cliche. Uh, if you read the next verse, and I'm not trying to prophesy or prophesy, you know, <laughs> Uh, but uh, the next verse for 21 says, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't know what that means. I'm not a end time type of guy. Uh, I can't tell you what's going to happen. But I will tell you that if if the year of 2021 is going to be like anything like the tail end of what we've seen in 2020 with all these people getting baptized and these people coming to church and us being able to evangelize and get out in our, in our city. Uh, if, if that's a testament to what's going to happen in 2020, I'm just really excited. And I think what, what God is doing in our church, we're going to be able to reach the people that are churched, the Jews, and we're going to be able to reach the Greeks, that people that we don't know. You know, So I'm just excited for the next year. So. He heathens, heathens, that's what we call it. That's hillbilly speak. We got, we got church folk and got heathens. And uh, when we built this building, we, we didn't have a lot of people. And we didn't have much money. And it took two years to build this building. The men in the church worked for so long. And Monday through Saturday, month after month after month after month. I'll never, ever be able to adequately thank Jack Hill or my daddy. They, just, they were just here day after day after day after day. And I, I remember we had these six columns. They were, there were no walls. It was just a, a very basic roof and six beams. And I was standing back there in the mud where the sound room was and uh, I, I, I just a horrible sense of fear came over me of how in the name of God are you ever, ever going to fill this thing? And how are you ever going to pay for it? And, and a pastor came by and uh, someone that I'd known for a long time and he, and he put his arm around me and he said, uh, I hate to tell you this, Harold, but you built it too small. And uh, I looked at him like he was from Mars and said, you know, it's like, if we ever got this thing filled, I'd be more than happy with my life. And uh, <laughs> now um, uh, the people were able to gather together. There's, there's just no way we'd get them all in this room right now. And uh, uh, I'll tell you that story because Draylon said something so powerful to me a while ago. He said, when I was young, Pastor Hoffman, he said, I, I made a list of what I wanted. And he said, I, I wanted to have a good wife. And he said, I wanted to have a family. And he said, I, I wanted to be on the staff of a church and, and be the the." worship pastor of a church and and I wanted to be able to do a project and do a recording and are, are you 26 now how old are you 27, 27. he said just he just big old tears running down his cheeks and he said I already have all that and he said I'm not even 30 yet and he said so I'm going to have to readjust my dream <laughs> Because God's already given me what I thought was the ultimate. And he said, now it's obvious God's got more for me in my life. And so 
I'm telling you from me, Draylon. I, there's an old saying that says you got to kiss a lot of toads before you find a handsome prince. And as a pastor, I've kissed my share of toads. <laughs> I deserved somebody like Draylon after all the garbage that I went through. I just want you to know that we are so grateful for you and Kelsey and yes. your son. <laughs> it was so tough because, you know, I've been around Pentecost all my life. And, and so they're, they're a little bit of chatter sometimes from, from elders, you know. Uh, how come Draylon don't sing the old songs? And, and he was so precious to me. He said, Brother Hoffman, I, I wasn't even born when they were singing them songs. He said, I'd gladly sing them if you could teach them to me. I just don't know them. And uh, so uh, we, we, you know, my mother's not here tonight. My, my mom, is she here? Oh, she is here. <sighs> My mother has a favorite preacher, and uh, and if her favorite preacher isn't preaching, she's uh, always just a little bit disappointed. And uh, I wasn't here two weeks ago, and and we I got on the phone with her and said, "How was church?" And she said, "It was absolutely amazing. It was incredible." She, I said, "So how was the preaching?" She said, "It was perfect." She said, and so I, I said, I, 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 I told Brother, Brother Michael, I said, that's high praise, dude, coming from Esther. And, uh, uh, <laughs> and it, I, I look around, I, I have flown a couple million miles, if you added them all up. And uh, I've been in hundreds of churches in so many different venues. I'm, quali- I'm qualified to say this. This is a really good church. And I'm, I, I love you, and I'm proud of you. I, 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 I told Brother Mangan one time, which is an amazing church in Louisiana, I said, this is such a great church. And he looked at me, and he was so sincere, and he said, it's a good church here. He said, we're trying to be great, but he said, it's a good church. And I appreciated him being that honest and forthright about it. And so I, I'm not going to go crazy and say we're the greatest there's ever been. But I can very confidently say this is a really good church. And I, 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 <laughs> here's a verse. Here, here, here's the first verse in Ephesians chapter 1. This is what it says. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ... By the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. And there's so many great stories in that verse, and I've got to do my best not to chase rabbits. But I've always believed the book of direction in the Old Testament was the book of Joshua. And we won't do it tonight and reinvent the wheel, but I did a thing with you and went through every chapter of Joshua not too long ago and called it getting out to get in. And, but as much as I believe the book of Joshua is the book of direction for the Old Testament, the book of Ephesians is probably the greatest book of direction for the church in the New Testament. And when you compare, the, they, they are called epistles. It's just a, it's a, Stained glass word for the letters. And so, you know, everything from the book of Acts pretty much to the end of the Bible is a letter that was written by one of these apostles for a different situation. And, and almost without exception, really I, I can't think of many exceptions, Every one of these letters, somewhere in the letter, has a rebuke in it. Something is being done that the writer is trying to instruct them to do better. But when you read the book of Ephesians, there's no rebuke. It's like it really was a very, very, very special place. 
And, and I think it's important the way he starts the letter. He said, to the faithful, to the faithful. Yeah, you know, I, I don't have time to talk to you about Goliath. I, I did a lot of work on this thing. And as near as I can tell, Goliath was over nine feet tall. He was a big boy, you know. And uh, I remember going to uh, Dick's Sporting Goods years ago, and they had one of Shaquille O'Neal's tennis shoes, size, is it 24 or 26? 24. I took my shoe off, put it inside of his shoe, and rattled it. I mean, it, it's, it's two feet long. That, that's what size shoes he wears. And he, he's a little over seven foot tall. Uh, I can't imagine somebody that playing basketball, his head's almost to the, well, it would be the bottom of the net. <laughs> I mean, he was massive. And when you talk about the fight between David and Goliath, all, all of the intention is put on David and, and how he... He killed this massive giant. But, but I found this verse. Let, 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 me, let me read this verse to you. It's, it's in, it, it, here, here's 1 Samuel 17 and verse 51. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath and slew him, cut off his head. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines. And in verse 53, it says they, you know, they spoiled the enemy. My point is, it, it, how many giant killers are there in the Bible, really? Uh, uh, um, there's a, I think it's in Kings. Um, it, it's apparent Goliath had at least four relatives. <laughs> and that's why some people think David picked up five stones. <laughs> but uh, um, it, it's it's kind of neat because when David got old, they had this uh, this gla this this giant that came out, and David went out to fight him. And uh, there was this is what a cool name. His name is Ish Ishbenabab. He went out and and basically killed the killed the giant. And he told David, he said, "Now you go sit down and." Don't, 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 don't do this no more. We'll take care of these guys because we don't want the light to go out of Israel. And it, it's kind of like what these young men do for me right now. They said, Pastor, don't do this right now. We'll take care of this, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, there were no giant killers in the, in, the, in the family of Saul. But David produced at least four. And... It's, it's a great thing to kill a giant, but when you read the Bible, how many giant killers are there? And my point is, if killing giants is the only thing that makes you great, well, then very few of us have got a chance. After David killed Goliath, there was still a battle that had to be won. And it wasn't won by David. It was won by all these faithful people that were in the military and were standing with him. And I never did agree with it. And if you've been around me for any length of time, you know, I, I take great umbrage at it. But people say, you know, I go to Brother Hoffman's church. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Just, mm -mm. This is not my church, okay? It's just, I just have the privilege of being called pastor. But this is, this is the Lord's church. And, and when I'm dead, they'll get somebody to replace me. And the church will go on because that's the way we build it, to be on the foundation of the word and not to be a personality-driven church. And, and I, 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 what, I, what I'm trying to get across to you is I get a lot of credit for stuff that goes on around here, but it's you. And it's Thanksgiving time. I'm telling you as your pastor, I can't think of a week. I mean, I usually keep notes, and after a while, I just gave up every week. There are multiple things that happen in this congregation where people take care of one another and do amazing things for other people and never, ever broadcast it. A lot of it's done anonymously. They never, ever say anything, and it's like... So the, they can say all they want about, you know, Brother Hoffman did this. But the truth is the real battle has been won by this church family. I want you to know I'm thankful for you. 
And so you don't have to do anything. This is just me saying thank you to you. <laughs> it's my applause to you for, for, I mean, it's cold outside, man. I mean, it's stinking raining out there. It just, it's just kind of an ugly night. And all these restrictions and everything are going, but, but here you are, you know. Monday night, I, we had well over 100 people in prayer. And I told Mia, I said, Mia, you got to understand, if you have a dinner, lots of people show up. And if you give away free stuff, lot of, all you got to come is to a youth meeting where they know there's going to be free pizza. That's all you got to do, man. There's kids here that I've never, ever seen before or since. But if they know there's going to be free pizza, they'll show up. But, but when you call a prayer meeting, mm, that, that's the diehards are the people that come to prayer meeting. And, and when I see your faithfulness to prayer, and I, I'm... <laughs> I, I don't know if this is right to say, I'm just proud of you, and you make me smile, and, and, and I, I, I'm, listen to this verse, here's, this, this is one of the most, uh, it's a technical verse, okay, this is Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 16, it says, from whom the whole body fitly joined together, and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Here's what it says. I don't know if this is NIV. This is New International Version. It says, from him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. And of course, there's lots of stuff you can get out, but here's two things I want you to understand from this verse. It is easy sometimes for you to say, well, if I don't go to church tonight, I won't be missed. You're wrong because according to this Bible, uh, you're a joint. Uh, I'm not talking marijuana here, okay? Uh, you're, you're a, you're a, a here, th- look at this thumb. This thumb works really good. This one doesn't work at all because I cut it off years ago with a saw. And so they, they screwed it back together and it doesn't have a joint in it. This one does and this one doesn't. And I, I can do lots of stuff. I, we've been moving, and so Re, I was with Renee yesterday, try, and I said, Renee, I don't have a thumb, and that's all I can say. Wham! I dropped it, you know, because it just, it's hard to grab stuff sometimes with don't have a thumb, and your body has many more options with joints. Every one of you are a movable part of the body, and if you're not here, we can't do as much. You're underestimating your value to the church because it says every joint needs to supply what only it can supply. And then it says, and if it does, the body is built up in love. You, you've, you've heard of the gifts of the Spirit, you know, Corinthians 12 and 14. Every, I, I was in Bible school, and I had a favorite teacher. He was, he was a wonderful... And I went to his house, and I wanted to talk to him about something. And his wife said, he's not here. And I said, I, I, I really need to talk to him. And she kind of hung her head, and she said, okay, if you really do, get in the car. And uh, he was in the hospital, and he didn't want anybody to know he was having surgery. I felt so embarrassed that I had been so forceful with this woman. But... I told her I needed to talk to him, so she took me to him. I walked into his hospital room, and and I said, I I want to have the gifts of the Spirit operate in my life. And I'll never forget this very piercing question that he asked me. Why? (laughs) Why do you want the gifts of the Spirit? And I didn't know how to answer that. And uh, he said something so powerful to me. He said, 
Isn't it amazing, Harold, that Corinthians 12 is the gifts of the Spirit and Corinthians 14 is the gifts of the Spirit, but right in the middle is chapter 13, which is that thing. I don't care if you have all the gifts. If you don't have love, you have nothing. And when you read this verse, it says it builds up itself in love. In other words, the real test of a church is not whether you have the gifts of the Spirit operating. There was no more gifted church than Corinth. As a matter of fact, if you read the Corinthian letter, Paul said, you come behind in no gift. But he said, I wanted to speak to you like spiritual people, but I can't. You're carnal. And so I'm going to have to speak to you like children. So remember Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples. Not because you have the gifts of the Spirit, but that you have the fruit of the Spirit in your life. And that's important. And I've talked a little bit too long. How about you saying something? I'll say something. <laughs> I have the mic anyways. <laughs> uh, so as a, as a husband, I'm really grateful for my wife. Um, she, is, she has been a rock. She's incredible. She is a, a silent giant. She does so much behind the scenes for our family, for this church, but really for our family. And so... Uh, me and Pastor Jalen were talking while we were in Boston on the flight. And I was like, man, we we're trading stories. Obviously, I spent some time with some old friends, and we were trading some stories. I'm like, man, I'm so glad I married Bridget and not some of them other girls I dated. Like, man, <laughs> it would have been, been a bad day. Oh. So, uh, but no, I, I'm super grateful for, you know, Bridget and, and uh, Dominic and Jordan. And nearly, it's just been over 15 years ago, we made the decision to move here. Uh, we were pregnant with Dominic. We knew we wanted to raise our family in a healthy environment that had a, a good youth group. So we made the decision to move here. And uh, it, it's just been an incredible journey. But one thing that I really, that really stood out to me, um, you know, as a, as a husband, I'm grateful for the family that I have. And as a daddy, I'm grateful for probably some of the most underrated, under the radar leaders that First Church has. And one of them, they're not here, but... Um, Kento and Bianca, our youth pastors, are phenomenal leaders. <laughs> phenomenal leaders. And as a dad, to be able to trust my boys with this church and the leadership that we have here, as a father, it means the world to me. And I've watched as even Tyrone, who is impacting my life without even really knowing, you know, usually around this time, everybody's giving up their Christmas lists and what they want and all the toys. And as a dad, to know my, and I'm going to embarrass my son, but that's okay, because that's what I do. Um, just to have Dominic, who could wish for anything and write anything on his Christmas list, the only thing he's asking for is a camera. It's expensive. But it's a camera because Tyrone and Pastor Kenta with their Kadesh meetings just have ministered into my family that his only Christmas gift he wants is to serve you with the camera so he could be on the team. And as a dad, you have no idea how much that, it wasn't toys, it wasn't more clothes. He wants a camera so he could come to First Church, serve on the team and take pictures and be involved in church. And as a father, I am thankful for the leadership of this church and our senior pastor and what you guys have done for me as a family. Two weeks ago, I, I was in such pain. I, I, I'd, I'd never had back pain. A couple years ago, I fell backwards on a hill and, at the house, and I hit the small mat with a big rock. And it was, oh, it was, it was a bad. And I've never really, it's never been the same since. But when I get tired, um, it sneaks up on me. And so, as some of you know, I, I was, man, I, I was crying sometimes like a little girl, man. I, I, I was in unbearable pain so I'm sitting over here because I couldn't stand up and I'm sitting over there praying and all of a sudden here comes Vaughn and Dominic and they got on either side of me and said we came to pray for you pastor and one of them grabbed my hand the other grabbed my other hand and they held up my hands and prayed this amazing prayer and I I was so overwhelmed and I said you know 
I, I've been doing this for a long time, and I've never had that experience, ever. I mean, I've seen people say, go up there and pray for the pastor. But these kids on their own accord, these two fellows just came up and just said, we want to pray. And how old's Dominic? Four, four, where? Huh? Fourteen? Jordan. It was Jordan. And how old's Vaughn? Nine. So I got these two young men praying for me. So when I got done, I told them that. I said, no, no young men have ever done this for me. This is a first for me. Jordan looks at me and said, no problem, Pastor, and walks away. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. I get, we got 10 minutes left. Get something in here. You got something to say? Huh? Where? Brenda? Brenda? My mother just volunteered you wherever you are. You, she didn't have her hand up. Oh, Esther volunteered. You got to, I'm sorry, she, she's the queen, you know, so you got to say something. <laughs> Oh, I think she wants me to tell this story. Um, back in the beginning of August, um, my daughter called me from Texas, and my 16-year-old granddaughter, Bella, had a friend that has a, a severe eating disorder. And she, um, it was so bad that her heart is damaged. They said the muscles, the lining of the muscles of her heart were deteriorating because of the eating disorder. She had... She had starved herself. Um, she thought she was fat, and she was a skinny, young, pretty girl. So um, my daughter called me to ask if we would pray for her, and I said, absolutely. So I got a prayer cloth, and I, um, I sent it to the mom and dad. I don't, I don't know them, um, but I just told them that um, our church believes in miracles. We have a big God, and he's, he can heal your daughter, and he can do a miracle, and we're going to believe for that and pray. So I asked the ladies at the morning prayer to pray. And I asked our care group that are faithful prayer warriors to pray. And gradually, um, I've gotten reports from my daughter that she was better, but she was so bad that the doctor said she has to be hospitalized. She has to have treatment. She has to have training to retrain her mind and her body. And so that was a hard decision because this girl is... She's a straight A student. She is brilliant in her mind, but she has this disease. So they hospitalized her, and she, she got better. She's gained like nine pounds. And we, Bob and I got a package in the mail last week, and it had a thank you card in it and a box of yummy candy that she sent us and a sweet letter that said um, that Kylie is recovering. She's... 95% better physically. She's gained weight. She's doing well. Mentally, she still has challenges. But she said, as soon as you sent me that letter, I put it at the hospital in her pillow, and it's still there today. She's home. She's doing well. Of course, she's homeschooling. Um, but the parents said, from the day we put that in her pillow, the progression has gotten better. And they're believing for a complete recovery. So, no family, go. No, no family has had a greater impact on this church than Bob and Brenda. And, and I, I just, you, there are more stable people in this church because they stabilize them than anybody else. And, uh, yeah, it's the truth. It's true. It's true. And uh, 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 it's just, you know, Brenda was our ladies' director for years and recently decided to, 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 to step aside and let someone else fill her role. But the, the very next week, she was going around doing bacon stuff. She's always been a giver. So whether she has the title or not, she's got a gift of hospitality and, and serving. And it's just what she does. My daughter, Ashley, is in Brenda and Bob's house every week, every week. And, and it, I want to thank you for 
giving Renee and I a little bit of... (laughs) Wow, is it important for us to have a little alone time every now and then, you know, in Jesus' name. All right, somebody else talk before Ashley. She's going to beat me up on the way home tonight, so show Oh, looky here. Go ahead, Mr. Jordan. Um, so when I was born, I was actually born deaf. And for about four months, my dad would always come behind me and he'd clap behind me. And I wouldn't flinch. I wouldn't react or anything because I couldn't hear him. But one Sunday night while we were at service, he just felt a calling from God to bring me up to the altar and pray for me. So that very day when we came back and he clapped behind me, I turned around and stared at him. And him being confused brought me to the doctor's office. And the doctors were in complete surprise. And they didn't know what happened, but my ears had been healed. Church that can be explained. That's... That's the kind of, we want stuff to happen that nobody can explain. That was great, Jordan. That was great, Jordan. (laughs) Two more, two more, and we'll stop. Looky here. Go ahead, compadre. So, once upon a time, I was filled with the Holy Ghost, and I was baptized in Jesus' name. But what many of us don't know tonight is that The night before I was baptized, um, I had a little disagreement with my parents because I had already been baptized two times before. I was baptized in the Catholic Church, and I was baptized when I was 14 in the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And so I, you know, it took me a while to get the revelation, and, you know, it's okay that my parents disagreed with me because it took them a long time to get the revelation. However... (laughs) That was, my, that was my story for a really long time until three weeks ago when both of my parents were also baptized in Jesus' name. And I just want to add on that not only both of my parents were baptized in Jesus' name, but my friend Valentina was baptized on the same exact day. And that's just a testament of God's exceedingly and abundantly above everything that we will ever ask or think. So I just want to say that I'm so grateful for the vision that Pastor Hoffman, Pastor Draylin, Pastor Mike, Pastor John, Pastor Kento that have put on this church. I am so grateful for you guys. (laughs) Someone gave Safi's father, Ghassan, a a, a recording of a man teaching on the oneness of God. And she said, here, listen to this. This is heresy. So his daddy listened to it and he said, makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> and he gave the thing back to the lady and said, uh, that's what my pastor teaches. And after that, he said, I see it and, and got baptized. And that night when we baptized Farah, his mother and his daddy and Valentina got baptized that. Then Gardini got baptized. So I went up to Sophie and I said, Sophie, none of this would have happened without you. You were the catalyst that made this whole thing happen. He turned and looked at me. I remember when I was a kid, I used to read Superman comic books. And Superman had this laser vision. And this stuff had come out of his eyes. And I don't know if it's a good example or not, but when Sophie looked at me, it was like Superman, dude. It was like laser beams came out of his eyes and with this stern faith he just looked at me and said just the beginning just the beginning <laughs> we're grateful for you who is that I, I got Tanisha oh yeah um, I love you pastor and I love you girlfriend I know you do Um, I don't know what I've done in this life to deserve the love that I have from this church. And uh, it's been 10 years now. Maddie was nine months when we started coming here. She's 11 years old now. And um, God's just really kept me, whether I've uh, 
been a joint or been a missing joint. Um, and this year has been no different. This year should have broken a lot of us, but uh, like Brother Mike, my family has been kept and none of us are sick, we're well. My husband and I have both been working. I did lose my job for six weeks, not because of COVID, we never shut down. They fired me and they made a mistake and took me back. God's just been keeping me. And uh, I did, did you know that the Heart Attack series is on uh, Apple Music? So I did, God's just really been dealing with my heart this year. And, um, you know, sometimes I get to a point where I, I have all those things that I've been at this altar praying for for the last 10 years. I have it. And so I think I'm good. I don't think like Draylon, oh, let me get some new goals. I'm good. I, I've arrived. <laughs> but God has said no and has this year slowed me down, sat me down, dealt with my heart, brought some things to the surface, dealt with me with, you know, uh, my faith and addictions and um, just brought, I, I thought I was good. I, I've arrived, but no, God's still working on me and taking me to the next level and preparing me for the next thing that he has for me, keeping my family. I'm blessed. Before you say something, I want to say something. Okay. My wife is watching right now. My wife said this. She said, Harold, I have taught hundreds of people over the last 30 years. But she said, the, the best student with the sharpest biblical mind I've ever met was Tanisha. And she said, don't underestimate that girl, Harold, because God blessed you with an amazing mind, and you're going to do something mighty for God in your life, honey. Yes, you are. Thank you for what you just said. You're it. You're the cleanup hitter. I just didn't want to leave without telling God thank you, and I appreciate Take that down. I got to hear you, man. <laughs> that muffled mask tag on it. I didn't want to leave without telling God thank you, and I appreciate this church. You guys have been a great blessing to me. I've had challenges in the last couple weeks to where I haven't been to the prayer, but I've been here on the phone, so I wasn't counting it, but I was on the phone <laughs> praying with you guys. But I just want to just thank you all for who you are and what you are to me and Aiden, and I appreciate you all. You guys are great, and I... I appreciate you. Chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both were righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. If you know your Bible, this is the dad and mom of John the Baptist. Jesus said, there was never a greater man born by a woman than John the Baptist. And the only reason given for these folks to be the parents of this great man who basically introduced the world to Jesus was they were faithful. They were faithful. And I just want to tell you on Thanksgiving week, I am very thankful for this faithful group of people. Amen. Let's stand and pray. Lord Jesus, everybody in this room's got a story. Everybody in this room's got a testimony because there is no testimony without the test. And I am so honored to be in a room with a lot of amazing students who passed the test. 
though they have not all vocalized it tonight, every one of them, if I would have called on them, would have had something amazing to say. You have blessed us. You have blessed us. We are so grateful, God, to know you. And not just to work for you, but to walk with you. Noah was famous, Lord, because he worked for you. But Enoch walked with you. And we don't want to just be people that are so busy working for a God that we lose contact with the God we're working for. We want to be people who walk with you and worship you. So I pray, according to your word, not because of who I am, but because of what I am. I am the pastor of this congregation. And because of that, you have given me the authority, Lord, to be able to bless these people. So if there's anything good in me at all, take it out of me and give it to these precious men and women and their families. I pray humbly, God, that you would put a hedge around about them, that you would put a canopy over them, and you would put a foundation beneath them. I pray, God, that you would guide us, guard us, go with us, direct us. Tomorrow's a great day when families are going to be together, and I pray, Lord Jesus, that it would just be a great time of fellowship, and a great time of just breaking bread together and for us just to be <laughs> grateful to be alive and to have your air in our lungs, to have your sanity in our mind, to have your strength in our body. I ask you tonight, Lord Jesus, as we leave this place, that we ever and always remain thankful, thankful for what you've done for us. And we will never, ever be silent and we will never, ever be muted, Lord, but we'll always do our very best to be a witness and to be willing above all things to vocalize our gratitude for what you've done in our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and call it done. Amen. 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 <laughs> Thank you so much for being here tonight. And thank you for these great testimonies, stories that you've told. You bless us and you encourage us. Nobody got drunk. Nobody told a dirty story. Nobody cursed. Nobody smoked dope. And we still had a great time. We still had a great time. Go home. Get a night of rest. Be with your family tomorrow. I'll see you soon, all right? God bless every one of you. Happy Thanksgiving. Amen. Ha, ha, ha.